So I had I had an idea for a custom rake work. I'm working with, together with this AI thing, but I was thinking about. Hear me out. This is crazy. What if I make a robot and make the wake word my name? Hmm. Interesting. I like the idea of the custom wake word. I do have to ask why your name. Because I have a theory that I'm going to be testing, which I'm going to try to make a robot and, and convince the AI that it's me. Are you going to take your consciousness and put it into the robot? Well, if you think about it, what is consciousness in a jumble of memories that basically decide how we're pretty much operating? And I can turn that into like a basic chat bot. Technically, a wake word is just your normal name. Like people call you a certain name and you react to it. That oh, works for me. So we're just going to say, hey, Jorvan? Yep. All right, let's do it. If you head to mycroftai.gitbook.io and docs, you should find the documentation page for Mycroft. Scroll down to customizations and using a custom wake word. This is a great doc to get you started on how to create your own custom wake word. They show you precise first, but I want to show you briefly Pocket Sphinx. This is the super easy way to create your own wake word. However, it is not very accurate in my experience. To do this, let's open up a connection to Pycroft. And hopefully, you have followed the guide to setting up Pycroft from the last episode we did with Mycroft. So you should be presented with this login screen if you're able to SSH in. In case you forgot, the default login is Pi, and the default password is Mycroft. I recommend changing that default password, but alas, for the sake of this demo, I've left it the same. Every time you log in, you'll be presented with the CLI tool. And hopefully everything should be running here, and as you can see, it's recording me saying all this. Hey, Mycroft! And when I say that, it comes up here, and you can see that it recorded everything I was saying for a little while. Hit Control C to exit out of that. Enter Mycroft Stop, and that will stop all of this. And then we need to enter Mycroft Config Edit User. As you can see, all this is doing is letting us edit a Mycroft.json file that's in the temp directory. I'm going to change the wake word to Hey Jorvan, as we discussed with Jay previously. And that should line up with the hot words listed here. So hey Jorvan, and then under that hot words, we're not going to use precise, that's the other wake word engine. I'm going to explore that after this. We're going to use Pocket Sphinx. There is no local model file, as that belongs to precise. Instead, we're going to define phonemes as based on a list of phonemes given in this document. This is the CMU dictionary for phonemes, and you can see them listed here. It's these one or two letter capitalized combination of letters that we're going to use, and you can see examples of how things are pronounced. Feel free to look at this and try to figure out what your particular wake word should be. Hey is going to be HH space EY space and then a period to say that that's the end of a word. And we'll finish that out by trying to or trying our best to pronounce Jorvan using the available dictionary. English can be a little weird so trying to shove it into just a few basic phenomes can be a little difficult. The document recommends 1 times 10 to the negative 18th for the threshold, but I'm going to use negative 12th here. Uh, let's see if this works. So I'm going to control X to exit, yes to modify, and when that's done, I'm going to call Mycroft start all. That should restart our services and Mycroft CLI client to go back into the client. Because we just restarted, it's going to take a moment to load all of the skills again and hopefully load up our Pocket Sphinx wake word engine instead of precise. Hey, Jorvan. Hey, Jorvan. Hey, Jorvan. There we go. After saying it a bunch of times, it finally triggers. Even with raising the threshold some, you can see it's 
not great. You have to get the pronunciation exactly right. There's not a lot of leeway here. So Pocket Sphinx is great if you need a very quick custom wake word, but it's not very robust and you're going to probably find that it either triggers on everything or you have a really hard time triggering it. That being said, let's take a look at Precise to see if we can make the wake word even better. Precise uses a recurrent neural network and to train it, we need to feed it a bunch of training data. This should include both the wake word, in our case, Hey Jorvan, along with a bunch of other noises, sounds, and phrases that are not Hey Jorvan. You can use things like your favorite TV show. You'll record a snippet of it, maybe for 30 minutes, break it apart into various segments, and use that as part of the training data for things that are not Hey Jorvan. For our purposes for now, I'm going to use the Google Speech Commands dataset to make up a portion of that not Hey Jorvan training set. Let's start by recording our wake word a bunch of times. Hey Jorvan. Hey Jorvan. Hey Jorvan. Hey Jorvan. Hey Jorvan? I find that you need somewhere between 50 and 100 samples to get started. You'll want to do this with different inflections so that the model can recognize different ways you might say the phrase. Also, if you're not the only person who's going to use this device, I highly recommend getting a different sampling of various people in order to train your model. This includes different ages, genders, accents, and so on if you want to create a robust model and avoid biases. Finally, it can help to record a bunch of samples that are close to our wake word to help eliminate false positives. Hey, Sauron. Hey, Sauron. Hey, Sauron. Hey, Moron. Hey, Moron. Hey, Moron. Hey, Jarvis. Hey, Jarvis. Hey, Jarvis. Hey, Mycroft. Hey, Mycroft. Hey, Mycroft. If you've watched any of my other keyword spotting videos, this method will probably look a little bit familiar. I'm going to use Audacity to help me divide up these long recordings into a bunch of smaller recordings. I have discovered this new trick in Audacity. So let's select the whole recording, analyze label sounds. You'll be given this menu. I put the threshold at minus 20 dB. Make sure it's average level and not peak. What we're going to do is look for silence bits or bits of silence and divide up the keywords along those lines. Uh, we'll make sure that the silence is at least half a second and that this interval's a little longer than a second. We want region around sounds and I put 0.3 here. Uh, that seems to work well enough. And we're going to give these some kind of label. The pound, pound, pound means increment the numbers with uh, leading zeros as necessary and start with zero. And this is my first batch. So I'll start with this and see how we go from here. So let's say OK and it should create a bunch of labeled sounds or utterances. I recommend zooming in and ensuring that they do indeed encompass the sound. From my experience with this recurrent neural network that's being used in Precise, these don't exactly need to be one second like we've done before if we're using something like a convolutional neural network, um, but try to make sure they're at least a second if you can. So move the little dots over so that they encompass the full sound and you can listen to them to make sure it is hey, what you on. think it is. And this is going to be a set of Hey Jorvan utterances that we're going to use for keyword spotting. So I'm going to look through these, see if anything is overlapping and I'll move quickly through this. You can see that it looks like it surrounds all of the sounds quite nicely. <clears throat> this isn't correct, so let's get rid of this one. 
Hey, Jorvan. And there we go. Then we say file, export, export multiple. I'm going to put these samples in the GitHub repository for this project. So I'm going to create a data set and I'm going to label it Hey Jorvan. Let's go in here, select folder. You want signed 16-bit PCM. The script we're going to use will take care of converting it from the 48 kilohertz to 16 kilohertz, so we don't need to worry about that. And let's say export. Now, when we go into the projects, you should see all of the files listed out. So this is my keyword. I'm going to do the same thing to a few other submissions that I got from Jay and a female voice to hopefully make this model a little more robust. I've broken apart the recording with all of the sounds that are very close to the wake word, like rhyming or it starts with a J after the hey. So we have things like hey Sauron and hey Jarvis and hey Mycroft just because hey Mycroft seems to trigger stuff. So you will probably want to add more to this as you learn what things will falsely trigger your custom wake word in Mycroft. This is just a starting place, but it will take multiple iterations when you go to deploy your custom wake word. Just be aware that it will take some time. I'm going to export these. And what I'm going to do is we have a data set that's going to be Hey Jorvan. We want to create a data set that's close to this. This is going to be my data set that's separate, but it's going to be a bunch of utterances that sound close, but really should be negative hits. They should not count towards the wake word. So I'm going to put them in here. And you're going to see how we're going to combine those with the Google speech commands data set. We're going to augment all of these with background noises. Um, these are things like running faucet or a crowded hallway, a, a variety of things that you will want to mix in with your keywords so that your model will work under a variety of circumstances. To do that, let's head to my GitHub repository for Precise, that's the wake word engine, and hey Jorvan. Let's head to the Jupyter Notebook link. And in here, there should be an open and collab button. We'll open that. Hopefully you are signed into your Google account because you will need it. And you can press shift enter to run these cells. This is a script that I come back to again and again for curating data sets for keyword spotting. Feel free to read through this. What you want to do is create folders in a certain format and this script's going to read those in, mix them in with some background noise, and spit it out into another file format or another folder structure that will work better for our keyword spotting. We probably don't need to change these settings. However, I am going to increase the sample time to 1.5 seconds because it does seem to take longer to say hey Jorvan in some instances if you're being slow and articulate. What this script will do is zero pad anything that's not that long and then before mixing in with the background noise or it will truncate anything that's longer than this. Notice that we're also going to set aside 20% for our test data set which is necessary when we want to check to make sure things are working. Shift enter, as soon as you run into code, Google will probably yell at you, so say run anyway. Next, it's going to download the Google speech commands data set. If we click this icon over here, you should see that happening. While that's going, let's create a new folder, which we're going to call custom keywords. And I'm basing it off of this variable here. And if you come up here, you can say, okay, we've got content. That's the folder we are in right now. We've got custom keywords. 
we want keyword one under here. So new folder. This is going to be, hey, Jorvan. We're going to trick this a little bit and pretend that this is a keyword, even though it ultimately won't be, we're gonna end up mixing it in with things that aren't the keyword. While this is still downloading, Let's go ahead and upload our samples, our raw samples to Hey Jorvan. Let's go into our GitHub repository. We'll go to dataset. There's Hey Jorvan. I'm going to control A to select all of them. Select open and say OK to let them upload. Once that's done, let's do the same thing here. So we'll go to upload. Let's go to Hey Jorvan close. Open all of those. And now we have our keywords and things that sound close to our keywords in this raw set here. The Google Speech Commands dataset has been sufficiently extracted and it's a bunch of fairly common words, left, on, no, off, one, seven, Sheila, and so forth. We also have some background noise that's going to be mixed in. We need to extract that background noise and we can refresh the files here. So you should see background noise. And these are just various background noises from the Google Speech Commands data set. If you're gonna be putting your device in a different environment, you may want to add to this. Just record, I don't know, several minutes of a busy sidewalk in an urban environment or a crowded hallway things like that. You'll want to add those here because these background noises are going to get mixed in to our keywords and things that aren't our keywords in order to create our full data set. This is known as data augmentation. You can pull down my custom data set here if you wish to add even more, but we're not going to do that. We want to point to content custom keywords, which we have here. And like I mentioned earlier, we're going to trick this into thinking that this is also a keyword. Let's download my curation script, which is should be in utils.py. This is just a script I put together for helping me do data augmentation. Here's the actual curation script. Uh, feel free to look through that. I have it up on GitHub and it is open source. And all we're gonna do is perform the curation and mixing of samples. And that's what happens when we run this. This will take several minutes, so feel free to go get some coffee or a snack and we will be right back. Once the audio mixing and data augmentation is done, we need to split the samples and move them into separate training and test folders. This is going to randomly grab a bunch of audio files from this list, I have a temp directory here, that's noise unknown, hey Jorvan, and hey Jorvan close. And that's just going to randomly grab 20% of the files from each one and put it into a curated data set folder. Looks like I have an error here. I forgot to update something. I forgot to check if this was a path there. Now, if my output directory keywords curated exists, and is a directory, it will be removed. Otherwise, just ignore it. And I'll make sure to update that on the GitHub repo. Let's refresh the files. Now you should have keywords curated and they should be split into test and train with each of your categories under those directories. Finally, we want to zip those up to make it a little easier to download for us rather than trying to download something like 60 or 6,000 different WAV files. When it's done, refresh. You should see your keywords curated.zip. Let's download those. When it's done downloading, head to your file explorer and extract all of those WAV files into one directory on your computer. Once again, this will probably take a few minutes. When unzipping is done, go into keywords curated and you should see the test and train folders. Let's check out train and feel free to play some of these. Hey, Jorvan. Hey, Jorvan. Hey, Jorvan. 
You can hear how the keywords have been mixed in with background noises. That was done randomly through that training script. Same thing with the Hey Jorvan Close. Hey Mycroft. Hey Sauron. Hey Jarvis. You can see how those are the not quite Hey Jorvan files, but they will be used to help train the model to recognize things that would ordinarily cause false positives. Now that we know how those keywords are structured, let's create our own folder here. We're going to call it Hey Jorvan with a dash this time. I don't think that matters. In here, we want to specifically call our wake word, wake dash word. The training script that we're going to use for precise will look for this directory. And similarly, anything that's not the wake word should be dumped in not dash wake dash word. I recommend using everything in that test directory to put in here, but once again, we need to replicate this directory structure. So we have wake word and not wake word under test. It's a little odd, but this is what that training script will look for. So we're gonna go into our curated list here. We're gonna go into train, and I'm going to open up two windows so you can see what's going on. And in Hey Jorvan, we need to curate these a little more because my script was used for putting sound bites together in a certain format. We just have to do a slight manual adjustment. So anything that's not test is training. So in wake word, we want hey Jorvan. So I'm gonna take those, move them to here. I'm gonna go up and then not wake word is everything else. So we have noise that's in there. We have unknown that's gonna go in there as well. And we have all of the close but no cigar words or phrases. And that gives us a combination of those three sets in not wake word. Then we do the same thing for test. Let's go into test. Noise is not a wake word. Unknown is also not a wake word. Hey Jorvan is our wake word in test. And everything that was close is not a wake word. So once again, we have not a wake word consisting of everything that's not Hey Jorvan, which as I scroll through here, you can see noise, unknown, Hey Jorvan, and wake word should be all Hey Jorvan. We are now ready to use this fully curated data set to train. So let's, I'm gonna cut this directory and I'm gonna go into my shared directory for VirtualBox. As you will notice in a second here, I have Ubuntu 18.04 set up in a virtual machine. And I did this because the precise training program requires a very specific version of Python it seems to work well under Ubuntu 18.04. That allowed me to make sure everything worked and the dependencies lined up. I've tried this on other systems and the dependencies just don't work very well. So I will link to a written tutorial in the description that will show you how to set up Ubuntu 18.04 in a virtual machine so that you can do training on your own computer. You probably don't want to do this on a Raspberry Pi. It's far too computationally expensive. So back to this part, I'm gonna go into my shared folder that I have set up for my virtual machine. You can see that I've already been using it here. I'm gonna get rid of these files and I'm going to paste my new data set. Feel free to look through those again if you so desire. And I'm going to launch my virtual machine. Let's log in. 
If we go to our shared folder, here's the files we just copied in. Note that to get this shared folder, you will need to install guest additions if you're using VirtualBox. Otherwise, you can put it on a USB drive, email it to yourself, whatever it takes to get your data set to this virtual machine. There are some permission issues when I try to train directly from this shared drive. So I'm going to copy this and I'm gonna drop it right in my home projects folder. Let's open up a terminal and we're gonna to head to that projects directory. You will see that I have the Mycroft Precise training program already installed. As I mentioned, I'll link to a tutorial that will walk you through the process of installing all of the dependencies inside of a virtual machine and then installing this piece of software. To use it, we need to activate a specific virtual environment which will give us access to some tools and that is in the Mycroft Precise directory under .vn bin and activate. As you can see, we're inside of this virtual environment now, and that gives us access to these tools. These allow us to train a machine learning model for wake word prediction and classification, along with testing it and converting it to something that our Mycroft instance can use on the Raspberry Pi. We will want to call precise train to do the training. Dash E is the number of epochs. In this case, 800 is probably good. You might be able to get away with 500. I like to go a little more than that. We need to give the output model a name. In this case, it's heyjorvan.net as the first unlabeled parameter. And then the second labeled parameter is the location of the training data as well as the test data, but it's just going to look for that training data. And that's going to be in the heyjorvan directory that's in this directory that we're calling this from. With any luck, it should wake up and begin training our model. You can watch the epochs fly by. What we really want to see is the loss and validation loss go down. We want to see the accuracy and validation accuracy go up. If we notice that the training accuracy is a lot higher than the validation accuracy, that means the model is overfitting, which you can see it is doing in this case. Ideally with some more training or with better data. You might have to go back and collect more data. The validation accuracy should get better. I'm gonna let this train and come right back. When training is done, take a look at your accuracy and validation accuracy. I'm only reaching about 98%, which is good, but you'll find that it will trigger or not trigger in some cases. I've heard reports of people getting that up to 0.999 or 99.9% .9 accuracy. That's really what you want to aim for if you're trying to make this a robust smart speaker and have a really good model for activating at the right times and not falsely activating with things like people talking in the background about random things, not saying the wake word or the TV. It also looks like I just started to reach 0.977 and 0.98 here. And what we can do is actually train again and it picks up from where it left off. So let's add another 200 epochs and see if that helps. As you can see, the validation accuracy starts in that 98%. And it just adds epochs onto it. You'd have to start completely over with a new model if you didn't want it to pick up where it left off. In this case, it looks like the model is pretty much flatlining. We're not getting any better accuracy. That means you should probably come in with more data, but this is gonna be a good enough start, at least for this video, to show you what you need to do. I would double the amount of keyword samples and not keyword samples that you have in order to create a more robust model and hopefully bump that accuracy up. From here, it's always a good idea to test against your test data set, which I do not believe that the model has ever seen during the training process. And we do that by calling precise test, heyjorvan.net, which is the model, and we call it against our test set. Oops. We do not call it against our test set. We call it against the data set and it goes in and finds that test folder. As you can see, there are not many 
files to be had, and these should be the ones that are in that test folder. Like I mentioned, the script knows what to do. That's why we have to put those files in a very specific directory structure. Once again, we're getting 98.5% with our test set. That's not bad. 0.11% of false positives seems pretty low, but you'll find that it triggers just enough to be annoying. You really want to get that down to something like 0.05%, and that would happen with better data. However, only one false positive is pretty promising. That means it triggered when it shouldn't have. False negatives means that it didn't understand the keyword. And that's okay, we'd rather more false negatives than false positives. When we're ready, we need to convert that .NET model into a .PB model. And you can see here we have heyjorvan.pb and heyjorvan.pb.params. That's the model that Mycroft cares about. So we're going to copy these. We're going to put them back into our shared folder. Let's go back to Windows. And here are the files for our model. Let's copy those. I'm going to go into my Raspberry Pi, which I have connected through SSHFS. That way I don't have to do this with something like a USB thumbstick or try to email it to myself to the Pi. In here, we want to head to home, pi, there should be a dot local, share, mycroft, precise is our wake word engine, and you can see the hey mycroft model files here. So we're just going to paste those right next to the hey mycroft model. And once that's done, we're ready to go configure mycroft to use this model file. Last time we were logged into Mycroft, we were looking at the CLI, so control C to exit. And we want to call Mycroft stop to stop all of the services. Head to dot local share Mycroft precise in your home directory. You should see the hey Jorvan or whatever your model name is, the two files dot pb and dot pb dot params. You should also see the precise engine. What I have learned from reading things on the internet is that this version, point 0.2 of the Precise Engine, is an old version. We actually want to update this to point 0.3. That shouldn't break too many things, and that's to make it match with the training process we used for this model. To do that, I'm going to back up the current Precise Engine, which is just an unzipped version of that tar.gz file. I'm going to rename that to preciseengine.back. And there is a zipped pre-compiled version of the Precise Engine we can get for version 0.3. And it's been pre-compiled for the ARM v7L target, which is what the Raspberry Pi is using. So let's just download that right from GitHub. And we're going to unzip that file right in this directory. And that should create a new Precise Engine directory. That's what's going to be loaded by Mycroft to look for our keywords. We're going to do the same thing we did before and call mycroft config edit user. That takes us to the mycroft.json. If you perform the pocket sphinx change, you should see it looking like this. Otherwise, it should be using hey mycroft as your wake word with the precise engine. We do want to use the same hey jorvan wake word, so under hot words, make sure that hey jorvan matches our wake word up here. Let's change Pocket Sphinx to Precise. We don't have phonemes anymore. However, we do have a local model file that we just copied to this computer. The sensitivity and trigger level are parameters that you can play around with. The sensitivity should be between 0 and 1. The sensitivity increases as the value increases, so ideally, 0.1 will minimize false positives, while something like 0.9 will recognize almost anything. 0.5 is your default value, so I recommend starting there. But if you find it's triggering on too many false positives, maybe change this to like 0.3 or something like that. 
The trigger level is similar in that it's used to reduce the number of false positives. Three is the default value as you raise it between one and 10, it should activate less on false positives, but you might have a harder time activating it intentionally. So let's leave it at three and call it good enough, but feel free to play with those values if you are having too many false activations. Control X and yes to save. Let's do Mycroft start all to restart the services and the Mycroft CLI client to take a look at that pretty interface. Give it a moment to load all of the skills and start the WakeWord engine. Once it's done loading everything, let's give it a shot. Hey Jorvan, what's the weather like? And I'm watching this so you can see it too. You can see how it activated and it gave me information about the weather. Let's try some of those close, but not quite wake words. Hey Jarvis. Hey Sauron. Hey Moron. Oh, it got one. You would probably need to add more of those in. You can see a couple of false positives coming through. Hey Jorvan. Hey Jorvan, what's one plus one? This should give you a good start. At this point, you can collect some words that are known to create false positives, go back in, redo the training process and upload the model. That will take a lot of time and several iterations. You can also play with the sensitivity and trigger level to see if you can reduce those false positives, but this should give you a good starting place. If you followed along with the previous Mycroft episode, you should have an idea of how to connect some hardware and control it with a custom skill. Hey Jorvan, can you blink? Of course I can blink. Hey Jorvan, give me a wave. How's this for a wave? I hope that this inspires you to use a custom wake word in your next smart speaker or robot AI project. Remember that this is just the beginning. You'll probably spend the next few days recording samples that falsely trigger Mycroft and using those to retrain the model to avoid more false positives. I also recommend getting double or triple the number of samples that I showed in this video. But as always, good luck and happy hacking.